As the U.S. entered the Second World War, William Higginbotham was in his own words a 30-year-old graduate student at Cornell University who was too poor to consider marriage and with no prospects for a reasonable job. However, after three of his younger brothers ended up being drafted to fight, Higginbotham, wishing to do his part to help his country, decided to use his training as a physicist to help try and end the war. From 1943 to 1945, he worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory, where he was eventually made the leader of the Electronics Group and the Weapons Physics Division. Seeing in person the destructive path After the war ended, Higginbotham, with several of his co-workers from the Manhattan Project, decided to co-found and lead the Federation of American Scientists to help promote nuclear non-proliferation in the hopes of preventing a future nuclear war. During this time, he also ended up joining the newly founded Brookhaven National Laboratory on Long Island, New York, to continue conducting research into atomic energy. In the post-war period, there was a massive increase in the funding and interest surrounding the sciences from the public and the government with Brookhaven even appearing in a Spider-Man comic. Wishing to do more outreach to the public, Brookhaven began holding visitors' days, where each department would set up displays to show off the work they had been working on. Higginbotham, wishing to have something the public could physically interact with, designed a small computer game, which, after some help from David Potter and Bob Dvorak, became Computer Tennis, one of the very first video games, where two players could play a computerized version of tennis, complete with a court and a net. When it was first displayed to the public in 1958, it quickly became the most popular exhibition on Visitor's Day, where they're allegedly being in line out of the building for people to play. In 1959, it was displayed on a larger television screen with new game settings so that players could change the gravity of the planet where they played on, from Earth to Jupiter. The game was then dismantled and largely forgotten about for several decades. Until the 1980s, as several video game historians began searching for the very first video game, and for several years, computer tennis held that honor, popularly becoming known as Tennis for Two during this time. But before long, several other early contenders were discovered, demonstrating how the very early history of video games was much more complex than initially thought. When asked why he never attempted to patent the game and become the very first video game millionaire, Higginbotham replied, Firstly, since it was made at Brookhaven, the invention would have belonged to the government, so he wouldn't have made much money from it. Secondly, most of the programming done was pretty simple, so he didn't feel that it was innovative enough to warrant a patent. And lastly, Computer Tennis was an extremely large machine weighing several hundred pounds, making it very unlikely that many people in the late 50s could even afford to make space for it in their homes. Besides, Higginbotham wasn't trying to make gaming history. Computer Tennis was just a very small side project he put together in a few hours with some co-workers to get the public excited about science. Higginbotham's greatest life's work that he wished to be remembered for was that of nuclear non-proliferation, which he worked for decades to promote. When Higginbotham passed away in 1994, at the age of 84, he was remembered as a man who played an important role in two fields that have come to dominate our world, nuclear weapons and gaming. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. If you'd like to have a vote on any future content for this channel, please consider joining the Patreon. Thank you.